In this section, we will discuss the basics of engineering measurement in the urban search and rescue environment. The Nikon NPL-352 that is located in both the FEMA and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Structure Specialist cache has the ability to operate as both a theodolite and a total station. Theodolites measure horizontal and vertical angles precisely based off of a predetermined zero. They perform this by turning a telescope vertically and or horizontally. Most theodolites used today have digital readouts. That is, they give angular values in text numeric format. Older theodolites use graphic depictors, vernier scales. Total stations combine the angular measurement capability of theodolites with electronic distance measuring, EDM, capability. Typically, this electronic measurement ability is performed by an internal laser or radio wave. The Nikon NPL-352 total station used in urban search and rescue has two methods of electronic distance measurement, EDM, and can convert angles and distances to 3D coordinates and store up to 10,000 points in its data logger. Theodolites and total stations locate points relative to a central location or station by using angular measurements in two planes. The first plane is the horizontal, and angles measured in this plane are called horizontal angles. For urban search and rescue monitoring operations, we are establishing the zero horizontal angle, or azimuth, directly in front of us and perpendicular to the hazard we are monitoring. The Nikon NPL-352 calls this azimuth the backsight. Unlike the surveying applications where this instrument is typically used, the backsight is not located behind the total station. This will establish our coordinate grid based on the structure. The second plane is vertical, and angles measured in this plane are referred to as vertical angles or zenith angles. The zero zenith is established when the instrument is leveled. For the urban search and rescue operation, the convention is that straight up is the zero zenith angle. This results in vertical angles that are measured down from plumb. A point on a horizontal plane through the instrument, therefore, has a zenith angle of 90 degrees. Before we go too far, we want to lay out the terms used by the Nikon NPL-352 instrument, which are also standard conventions for distance measurement with a total station. The height of instrument, or HI, is the vertical distance at the instrument from the ground to the axis of the eyepiece. The height of the target is the vertical distance from the prism to the target point. Typically, if we are monitoring a specific target on a structure, this value will be zero. But if the prism is used, the HT will include the length of the pole and any additional distance to the center of the prism. The slope distance, SD, is the distance measured along the direct line from the instrument to the target prism. The horizontal angle, HA, and vertical angle, VA, are each the measurement of the rotation of the telescope from the azimuth and zenith that we establish when we first set up the instrument. The horizontal distance, HD, and vertical distance, VD, are calculated internally by the machine using standard Pythagorean geometry. These values are read directly from the instrument screen. The prism constant, PC, is the distance from the reflective face of the target to the center of the target. For prism targets, this is typically located somewhere on the prism frame. The mini prism, which is in the standard FEMA US&R cache, has a PC of 18 millimeters. A reflector sheet target, or a piece of structure being monitored, has a PC equal to 0 millimeters as you are measuring directly to the face of the target. The instrument constant is internal to the instrument and set at the factory. It is not adjustable in the field. The three-dimensional coordinate system normally used by surveyors with a total station is the NEZ system, where N is the northing axis, E is the easting axis, and Z is the zenith axis or elevation. You will see these coordinates displayed as N, E, Z. But we want to follow the typical right-hand rule convention used by structural engineers, which is X, Y, Z coordinates. 
Therefore, we will set the instrument to record data utilizing X, Y, and Z axis information, as well as display the output data in this same convention. The process of setting the instrument to perform this task is explained in detail later on this training video. In order to have the total station operate using the engineer system, first, set it to order the coordinates as E, N, Z, and then set the instrument to name the coordinates as X, Y, Z. So here is the result of the coordinate to be used in the urban search and rescue environment. The x-axis will be parallel to the face of the building or structure that is being monitored. The y-axis will be perpendicular into the face of the building. To do this, a location on the structure must be used to set the azimuth angle to zero degrees. This will be the backsight point, BS, used to set the initial grid orientation. If the structure being monitored is damaged, then the structure specialist needs to make the decision to identify a BS somewhere perpendicular to the structure. The Z-axis will represent the elevation above the XY plane. As discussed in the note-taking lesson, there are several abbreviation conventions used in the operation of monitoring a hazard in the urban search and rescue environment. The four required point types are Instrument Point, or IP, which is the location of the instrument. Backsite or BS, which is the location perpendicular to the building that establishes the zero azimuth angle. Monitoring point or MP, which is the point that is being monitored. And control points or CP, which are used to validate and re-establish the grid coordinate system. It is important to note that all of these points need to be visible from the IP location in order to effectively carry out the monitor plan. As stated in the note-taking lesson, it is also best to identify control points that are farther apart rather than closer together. This will help the instrument triangulate new locations with more accuracy, re-establishing the grid coordinate system after relocating the instrument. Here is a brief description of the coordinate system that will be used for monitoring plans in the urban search and rescue environment. When initially setting up an instrument location, we are going to give this point assumed coordinates of x, y, z equal to 1000, 100, 10 respectively. Having this difference will help the STS quickly translate a change in coordinates to a direction of movement. Once an instrument point IP is established, we must remember that we have been tasked with determining displacement of a specific hazard and the rest of the team is waiting for a report from us. Therefore, we need to immediately measure and record the monitor point data to establish the baseline for displacement. Once the initial MP data has been recorded, provide protection to the instrument from contact with personnel or objects on the site. Then go back, measure and record the data from your MP again. Once you have two consistent MP data recordings, you can start to establish reference or control points within the grid coordinate system. These control points will help validate the grid coordinate system and will help when relocating the instrument by becoming alternative IP locations or validating a new location within the grid coordinate system. This will enable you to quickly move the instrument while still providing the displacement data that has been requested. Here are some of the primary sources for error in a monitoring plan. The instrument height, HI, the height of the target, HT, and or the prism constant, PC, have not been entered correctly. Instrument or the prism is not set directly over a point. Sighting of the control or monitor points is off somehow. The instrument has been somehow moved from its original location. Finally, in setting up the total station at a disaster, we must always remember the needs of our client, the rescue teams. Immediately after leveling the instrument, we should cite the critical monitoring point or points in order to determine if they are currently moving. After it is known that the points are not moving and the structure is at least temporarily at rest, we should then turn on the total station and establish our grid. Following that, we can establish the additional reference points that will make our setup more complete.